Let's now consider a particle in a three-dimensional box. So we've got this box here, and in the x dimension, it has some width a, and in the y dimension, it has some width b, and in the z dimension, it has some width c. So if we were to write down the Hamiltonian for this system, we would get something that looks like minus h bar squared over 2m, open parentheses, second partial derivative with respect to x. Uh, now, because we're going to have a wave function which depends on three variables, it's going to be three-dimensional. So these derivatives are now partial derivatives. Second derivative with respect to y. Second derivative with respect to z. And all of that times a wave function equals the energy of the wave function. And once again note that for this specific case of the Schrodinger equation, uh, our particle in a three-dimensional box, the potential energy of xyz, the potential energy at all points in space within the box is zero. And it's infinite, infinite outside the box just as it was for the one-dimensional case. So a shorthand version of writing this would be to write minus h bar squared over 2m del squared psi equals e psi. Where our shorthand for this del squared operator, which is called the Laplacian operator, is the second partial with respect to every spatial dimension. Second partial with respect to x, second partial with respect to y, second partial with respect to z. So this operator is called the Laplacian operator, and it's uh, <clears throat> and it, we call it del squared. Okay, so then for the boundary conditions that we have for this system, we have that psi of where x equals zero for all y and z, and psi where x equals a, the ed the other edge of the box on the x dimension equals zero. And that's for all y and z. All real values of y and z. And similarly we have this in the other two dimensions as well. We have it when y equals zero and when y equals b. We have it when z equals zero and when z equals c. Again, for the cases of all x and z being real, all y, all x and y being real. Okay, so what does this tell us? Um, this is similar to a situation we had when we looked at the classical wave equation and we can use the same type of hypothesis that we can use uh, separation of variables to help solve this system. So that would mean that our wave function of x, y, and z, so psi of x, y, and z, is a product of three functions, one which depends only on x, one which depends only on y, and one which depends only on z. So when we have this situation, then our total Schrodinger equation, our total uh, Hamiltonian, is going to break down into th is going to break down into three cases. For the x case, where I'll use the same yellow color I use for x, we have minus h bar squared over 2m, and this is an ordinary derivative now because it only depends on x. Second with respect to x equals e x, the function of x. And this is the same as we had for the case of a one-dimensional particle. The solution we get here is that x of x, the, the, the function which depends only on x, is some normalization constant a times sine n x, because now we have a quantum number for only x, and then n pi x over 
a, where a is just the width of the box in the x dimension. Then this procedure repeats itself for the y dimension. We have a second part, we have a second total derivative with respect to the y function, and it has its own energy as well. So the energies here are going to end up summing together and we have a specific wave function for the y dimension as well and y has its own quantum number and that depends on the width of the box in the y dimension and then just to round it all out let's write down z just for good measure even though it's quite anticlimactic and you can probably already guess what this is going to end up being equals an energy for z which leads to the analogous solution for z that a normalization constant times a sine of nz pi position z over c okay so then when we throw these back together when we use the normalization condition to try to find out what these normalization constants are this is now the analogous triple integral so the integral over all space but uh, in this case since we're only non-zero within the box we can restrict that integral to more specific regions 0 to a, 0 to b, and 0 to c for the x, y, and z dimensions respectively we know that psi star of x, y, z because psi is the wave function is a three-dimensional function now depends on three variables that this whole thing it has to equal one so if we solve this in the same manner that we solved it for the one-dimensional case what we'll end up getting is that our normalization constant the product of ax, ay, and az equals the product of all the one-dimensional cases 8 over a times b times c okay so that's probably not too much of a surprise either so then moving on to what our wave function is we just have the product of these three um, the wave function depends on all three quantum numbers nx, ny, and nz and it depends on x, y, and z equals that same constant 8 over ABC and then the product of these three sine functions sine NX pi X over A sine NY pi Y over B and if I can fit it on here hopefully NZ pi Z just barely over C and that parentheses closes out as well and that's our wave function and then the energies as we'll as we see here are going to depend on the three quantum numbers as well the e of nx and y and nz is going to be h squared over 8 times the mass of the particle and then it's going to be a sum of each individual quantum number, sorry, nx squared over a squared, ny squared over b squared plus nz squared over c squared. And for each of these cases, the energy that you get from going up the energy levels in each dimension is going to depend on the width of that dimension. So for smaller dimensions, you're going to go up in energy very fast, and for larger dimensions, you're going to go up in energy much slower. So this is uh, pretty analogous, we can see. We can see a lot of connections between the one-dimensional case. Um, this is pretty much just three independent sol problems being solved by themselves. And then we can see how the normalization condition and the normalization constant extends to three dimensions as well.